Hello, 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 and welcome everyone. Today is a very special day. Today is an exclusive event just for you, our Salesforce developers. And we're broadcasting live from the Salesforce Tower in downtown San Francisco. It's sunny and beautiful today. And we're joined not with just the tens of thousands online, but with this amazing studio audience here today. And I want to inspire you, motivate you, educate you today. But the most important thing I want to do is thank you. Thank you to all of our admins, our developers, our community group leaders, our MVPs, our partners. Thank you for all that you do to inspire us and drive us to continue to deliver innovation to you. Today, we're not just like talking to you all of online, we're out in Twitter sphere, we're out in social, and I think we have Cody the Bear. What is Cody doing over here? <laughs> Cody's going to take over our at Salesforce Devs Twitter handle for the day. And we want all of you to tweet because it's a new year. We have new product innovations. So we want you to set new code goals and we want you to share them with each other and help you achieve them. So tweet with us live during the show today and we'll have some interaction and fun. And as you're doing that, know that you are joining as part of an amazing and incredible community of developer trailblazers. Over five. <laughs> Everybody here is excited. Over 5 million registered trailblazers around the world in over 50 countries and 240 community groups which gather together regularly to help each other learn and understand the Salesforce platform. And Salesforce is connected and dedicated to delivering innovation to you. We've been delivering modern developer services since the inception. If you rewind back a little bit in history, look at like 2005, AppExchange was the first enterprise app store. Apex, the first serverless runtime. You keep going, force.com, the first platform as a service. That was incredible transformational things for you as developers. We had collaboration, mobile, reinvent learning with Trailhead, make that free. DX, incredible developer experience, Einstein AI. Platform events, so integration's easier. And if you're really detail-oriented, like Adam Olshansky's probably looking at me saying, you missed one in there. You missed one, Sarah. I missed talking about Lightning. Lightning is a component framework. And when we built Lightning in 2014, you rewind to five years ago, Lightning was built on web standards. But web stack was fragmented back then. If you look at the bottom, it's a very limited amount of functionality to build on. So Lightning built its own component model, its own things, which was great because it was value for you. But the problem then was that as developers, there was different syntax. The frameworks really became the language. And that was hard as developers, and your skills weren't portable. So fast forward to 2019, where we're at today, and the web stack looks very different. And that bottom foundation is much more complete. And we've seen game-changing web standards emerge. So what you have on top now is a thin layer of specialized services that frameworks can create. And that's why today I'm very excited to introduce to you Ryan Ellis and the product and engineering and UX teams have delivered Lightning Web Components. <laughs> This is a new programming model built on modern web standards to help you build apps faster. And speaking of hashtag code goals, people that are tuning in online like Daniel Peter, he's excited because he wants to see build apps using the latest standards. And no longer is there a divide between at Salesforce devs and JavaScript developers. This is a, a bridge that we're making. Those are his code goals. And then I personally have code goals here. I want to empower all of you to build apps faster and learn with Trailhead. So I need to take a selfie with all of you today. Everybody going to smile? All right, there we go. I'll take a few. And I'm going to tweet, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to participate in the conversation as well online. We're going to have some fun with this. Is everybody excited? So what this allows you to do is to build apps on the customer success platform for sales, service, marketing, commerce, and have a united 360 view of your customer with Einstein AI and the Trailblazer community surrounding you. And today, we want to build apps faster with Lightning Components, 
and you want to build with modern web standards and with a modern developer experience. And who better to talk about modern web standards than our principal architect of developer relations, Christoph Konreitz. Christoph, come to the stage! Good morning. Thank you, Sarah. Um, Stefan was a member of the pilot program, and he really says it best. Lightning Web Component is a game changer because it's built on game-changing web standards. And today, we're going to talk about three things that are really key to Lightning Web Components. We're going to talk about productivity, performance, and interoperability. And we'll start with productivity. With Lightning Web Components, you're really using the latest advances in modern web standards. So you're using things like ECMAScript classes, ECMAScript modules, but also things like custom elements and standard templates. But on top of that, we made it easier than ever to access your data and your metadata using JavaScript decorators like Atwire, and I will show that to you in the demo in a moment and you definitely get productivity through a library of over 70 UI components that are metadata aware, the base Lightning components. Now, Lightning Web components are also designed for performance. And that is because when you're using the full web stack that Sarah's talking about, the 2019 modern web stack, you have a lot more code executed natively in the web engine, more code executed in the browser, and less framework code executed in JavaScript. And that makes a huge difference. We'll take a look at it, and you can measure it using tools like the Chrome DevTools, and we'll do that in a second in the demo as well. And finally, Lightning Web Components are designed to work with the code you already have. So first, you can embed Lightning Web Components inside Aura Components. They can communicate through their public APIs or events. And finally, behind the scenes, they actually leverage the exact same underlying services. So things like the Lightning Data Service, same thing. Locker Service, same thing. Base Lightning Components, the same ones. You know what? Enough slides. Let's look at some code. Yeah, code. <laughs> and we'll start here in the sample gallery. We actually have six full-blown sample applications for Lightning Web Components, and we'll cover two of them today. And I will start in Lightning Web Components recipe. So why don't we go ahead and please give it up for Renee and Heather, who are driving the demos today. <laughs> All right. OK, so we are in recipes here, and I clicked the tile, and that took me straight to GitHub, where all of you can look at the code and install all these uh, applications in your own environment. But now, let's see these recipes in action. All right, so every card that you see on the screen here is a recipe. So that's a targeted code example, 30 lines of code or less focusing on a specific task. And at the top, you see that they are organized by category. For example, Apex, Data Service, and more. All right, but let's start simple. Let's go back to the first tab, the Hello tab, and we'll look at that Hello binding recipe. This one is super simple. It displays a greeting message that you can change by typing something in that input field. Very simple, but a good place to start to learn more about the syntax of Lightning Web Components. So let's go look at the code. So as I mentioned before, this is all about web standards. And it starts here with ECMAScript modules that you import using standard ECMAScript syntax. Now, Lightning Web Components also use ECMAScript classes, like here, Hello Binding. And these classes have properties, like greeting here, that we initialize to world. Now, if you look at that property, you, you'll notice that it's annotated with at track. That is a JavaScript decorator. Decorators are an emerging JavaScript standard that Salesforce is actually contributing to. Now, this specific decorator tracks changes, and it makes the property reactive. In other words, every single time greeting changes, automatically the view will be updated. Now, the view is defined in a template. So let's take a look at that. 
So here is the template, and here again, we are using the standard template tag, which is part of the custom element specification. So once again, everything here is standard. And if you want to bind a property, you use the double curly syntax here. Now, if you're currently using Lightning components, the great news is that all the base Lightning components, like here, Lightning card, for instance, are exactly the same. Not only that, but from the IDE here, you can actually access the component library to learn more about this specific component or any of the 70 plus base lighting components that are available. This is pretty cool. But there was one more thing that I wanted to show you about the Hello Binding recipe. So let's get back to it and inspect the DOM. Yes, let's do that. All right, and here you see something really new. See hello binding. No, this is not a new HTML tag. What's happening here, that would be a weird one, what's happening here is that when you create a Lightning Web component, you're actually creating a custom element, that web standard. And that is really, really great because it makes the DOM easier to read, easier to debug, everything is encapsulated, and it really matches what you're doing at development, at development time. Really great. OK, so let's look at another SCP, and this one is all about productivity and performance. We're going to see how to access data, which is something that you always need to do. So in this recipe, I can search for a contact, and behind the scenes, this is powered by an Apex method. So let's take a look at the code and see how this is implemented. And we start here in the Apex controller. And as you can see, we have a method called findContacts. It takes a search key parameter, and it's implemented with a simple SQL statement. Now, also notice that the method is annotated with cacheable equals true. Remember that, because I'll tell you more about that in a second. But for now, how do you, how do you use an Apex method in a Lightning Web component? Well, let's take a look. Here again, you can use the ECMAScript module syntax to import an Apex method. That's really great. And when you do that, you can then use another JavaScript decorator here at wire to wire the method to a property, contacts. Okay? And not only that, but the search key uh, parameter that you see here is also reactive, which means that every time search key changes, the method is automatically reinvoked. So how many lines of code to access your Apex method or to access your server-side data? I'll call that one, or maybe, maybe two. Let's say two. OK, <laughs> all right. All right, there was one more thing that I wanted to show you about this recipe. And for that, let's go back to the browser. And once again, we'll um, inspect the DOM. We'll bring up the Chrome DevTools on the Network tab because we're going to look at performance. So I'm going to look for a contact named Michael. Let's do that. All right, here is Michael. If you look at the bottom there, you see that it took 90 milliseconds for that request. That's pretty good. Now let's look for another contact, let's say Rosa. Here is Rosa, and you see that at the bottom, bottom it took um, 85 milliseconds, so pretty consistent. Now let's clear the console and search for Michael again. Click search, you see Michael, and at the bottom, in the network traffic, what do you see? Nothing. And that is by design, and that is great, because in this case, we didn't make any request to the server, and that is because the response was served from the cache. And that's what that cacheable equals true annotation was all about, and that is one of the many things we do in Lightning Web Components to deliver awesome performance. Woo! Yeah. OK, so the next uh, recipe is about metadata, like the secret ingredient. When you combine web standards with metadata, you really get incredible productivity. So this recipe on the right is a form that you can use in view mode or in edit mode to edit a contact. So let's, let's do that and edit that contact. Now, that form 
knows which UI element to use for each field automatically. So for example, if I wanted to, to change the, the, the account here, I would be presented with some kind of a pick list, right? Because there is a master detail relationship between contact and account. All right, so it's a simple form, yet pretty powerful. View mode, edit mode, automatically knows which UI element to display, and it can even perform data validation. So let's take a look at the code and see what's involved to actually build something like that. And here, we will start in the template. And you see that we are using another base Lightning component, Lightning Record Form. And because it is metadata aware, all you have to do is to specify the list of fields that you want to see in that form. You don't have to specify individual controls for each field in the form. It's done automatically because of metadata. Now, where do you define that list of fields? In the JavaScript file for that component. So let's take a look at that. And here you see something new and a key differentiator. You can now import static schema elements, like in this case, we are importing the fields that we want to see in the form. And this is a huge win because it gives you referential integrity. In other words, and I'm sure nobody ever does that, but if I, wanted, if I tried to use a, um, a field that didn't exist, I would have a development time error instead of the user getting a runtime error, which I think is better, right? <laughs> and also, yay! And also, nobody will ever be able to delete a field or an object that is used in code because now it is part of the metadata. Yeah. 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 All right, there is a last recipe that I wanted to show you, and this one. Um, this one is all about uh, Aura components or Lightning Web components working together with Aura components. Okay, so the, the component that you see on the screen here is an Aura component. That container component is an Aura component. And on the left, embedded in that Aura component, you see a Lightning Web component, the contact list. And they communicate with each other. So, for example, if I select a contact here in the Lightning Web component, the Aura component shows me the details. Great. So how do you embed a Lightning Web component in an Aura component? Let's take a look at the code. And here, we'll take a look at the code for the Aura component. And you notice that to embed the contact list, all I had to do was to use the contact list tag. And what is awesome as a developer is that I don't even need to know if contact list is an Aura component or a Lightning Web component. It just works the same way. That level of integration between programming models is pretty unique in JavaScript frameworks, as far as I can remember. This is really, really awesome. Now, let's go back to the browser, because yes, of course, you can embed components. But you know what? These components can also live side by side. And to demonstrate that, let's open App Builder here. And I'm going to change the implementation of that page a little bit, so we will delete the Aura component. And instead, on the left, I'm going to add a Lightning Web component that provides the list of contacts. So Lightning Web component on the left. And then on the right, I'm going to add an Aura component that provides the details for that contact. Great. So now let's save, go back. And now these two components live side by side, and they can still communicate with each other. So let's select a contact on the left, and the Aura component shows the details for that specific contact. Really great. And it works great on the desktop, but guess what? It also works great on mobile. So let's take a look at the exact same page in the Salesforce mobile app. So I open the menu here, load the same page, and here again, Lightning Web Component on top, Aura Component at the bottom, and they can communicate with each other. Yeah. Now, I wanted to take a look at the source code for that Lightning Web Component on top, the contact list. So let's take a look at that. And here you see that we have a bunch of lifecycle methods. So for example, connected callback, disconnected callback. What if I didn't know what these methods do? 
Well, I could look in the Salesforce documentation, of course, but now all of this is web standards. So what we're going to do here, we're going to copy this in the clipboard, connected callback, and just Google it. We're going to Google connected callback and see what happens. Well, not surprisingly, the first result that I see comes from the Mozilla Developer Network, which is kind of the reference for JavaScript documentation. And here I am. I learned that it's part of the custom elements specification, so that web standard again. And if I look down for connected callback, here I am. I will learn everything I ever wanted to know about connected callback. In other words, I'm getting my answer to my Salesforce question in a JavaScript community website or forum. That is awesome, and that is how you build applications fast with a modern programming model. Back to you, Sarah. OK, that was just incredible. I was sitting there, and I was like, OK, mind blown, right? That was incredible. And I think all of you online as well were just really enjoying this. If we look like Radhika, who here knows Radhika? Yeah, everybody does. She's incredible. She's excited to manipulate the DOM via HTML, via Lightning Web Components. It's very exciting. And then we have more code goals online. We also have um, Salesforce Jenny. She's excited to make a new app, and not just make the app, but also teach the community how to do this with Lightning Web Components. <laughs> Leah's over here giving some BAM love. BAM! All right, well, it's not just about building with modern web standards. It's also about building with a modern developer experience. And who better to help us learn more than our very own principal developer evangelist, Zane Turner. Zane! Thanks, Sarah. Hey, everybody. Who's ready to talk tools? Are you ready? Yeah, we're going to get nerdy about the tooling. And I want to start by talking about Dory, who's here in the audience today. And when we talked about Salesforce DX, she works with Encino. And Encino was part of the pilot, but they also are building apps for the App Exchange. And so they need tools that give them the flexibility to focus on business value and driving results forward, not focusing on setup. And that's where we're going to talk about a Salesforce DX. Salesforce DX helps you build modern apps faster by giving you a modern developer experience. It accelerates developer productivity, it works with your favorite tools, and it works with any org. So that's what we're going to look at. So what do I mean when I say that Salesforce DX accelerates developer productivity? Well, I mean that whether you choose to use Visual Studio Code or you choose to use Illuminated Cloud, you can choose the state-of-the-art IDE that makes sense for you and do your Salesforce development work. And when you're doing your Salesforce development work, you're going to benefit from powerful language services that we're building into our tooling. So you're going to get things like IntelliSense. I'm talking code completion and hinting and other tips as you're writing your code to make you more efficient. And not only are you getting more efficient, you're getting better. You're going to know that the code you're writing is higher quality, and more reliable sooner in your development cycle. You're going to be able to debug locally and test locally, which we're going to look at. And all of this means that you get to do more as you're doing what you already do today. What do I mean when I say that Salesforce DX works with your favorite tools? There's a lot going on here. It means that whether you're using one of the builders that we provide for you, say, under setup, App Builder or Schema Builder, or you're writing code in one of the IDEs we just talked about, all the way to how you choose to run your tests, whether those are your Apex tests or JavaScript tests using maybe a framework like Jest, which we're going to look at, on to how you choose to deploy using one of our APIs, building with change sets, or using the new packaging technology. No matter what you're choosing to do, wherever you are in your build cycle, Salesforce DX has tooling that works with what you're using. And Salesforce DX works with any org. So whether your team uses the org development model to build in a sandbox and release incrementally to production, or your team is building with packages, using new environments like Scratch Orgs and releasing an artifact to any environment with our new packaging technology, Salesforce DX lets you choose the method of release that makes sense for you. But it's one thing for me to be up here and to say this to you. I want to show this to you in a demo. So let's get into it. And thank you again, Heather and Renee, for driving us home. 
So we're starting here in the sample gallery again, and right next door to recipes is another one of our Lightning Web Component sample apps, the eBikes application. And this is a retail use case, and I want to hop right into an environment where we've configured this. So we're here, and we're actually in a sandbox, and we've installed the source code for eBikes. And this Product Explorer tab, as we can see in the center there, we have a list of products in a tile view format. And when you click on an individual tile, one of these bikes, we're going to get details there to the right. This is a pretty nice UI. It's interactive. I can see clearly what's happening. But what if I want to search by a specific price range or narrow down the list of products by material? We can't do that yet. And that's because we have work to do. So let's get into our IDE. So we're using Visual Studio Code. And we've installed not only the Salesforce CLI, but the Salesforce extensions for Visual Studio Code. So now we can do things like use the command palette to get a menu where we can quickly access the SFDX, or Salesforce CLI commands, here in a menu format. So I can quickly create a Lightning Web Component without having to memorize the precise command in the CLI, if I don't want to. But we've actually started all of our components, so I'm going to still use the command palette, and now I'm just going to search within my project. And I'm going to go right to the product tile list, and we're going to open up that JavaScript file. So this is the controller behind that tile we're looking at in the middle of our Product Explorer page. And on line three here, we're importing an Apex method, and that's controlling the list of products we're seeing. This get products method is controlling what items we're looking at. And Renee, let's hover over that get products. And you'll notice here, as we're talking about IntelliSense, I know that this Apex method has two parameters, filters and page number. And I know this without opening my Apex class. I don't have to go digging for it. I see it right here in my JavaScript. That's the power of language services letting you be more productive. So now that we know the parameters we need to work with, let's go down a little farther. And you can see there on line 17, we're getting a little visual signal that everything is awesome with our code, right? Who doesn't love the red squiggle letting you know you're being awesome? Renee, can we get a little bit more detail here? And you'll see we pop out the integrated terminal, and next door to it is a problems tab. It's an integrated view letting you know what's going on in your code. And you can see that I have two things telling me that I'm being awesome. The Lightning Web Components language server itself and something called ESLint, a linting service, static code analysis for your JavaScript that we ship with our tooling as well to let you write cleaner code. And this is telling me that I'm using the wrong construction there on line 17. I want to send my parameters to my Apex method, and we need to do it the right way. So let's get rid of those square brackets, and we're going to put in the right syntax here. And now you can see we're just using JSON format. We're passing on our filters and our page number. And as Christoph showed us, it's responsive. So now that we're sending information to our Apex, we can save our changes here. And the next step is, of course, to get it back into our sandbox. And this time, I want to work directly with the CLI here in the integrated terminal, another way of working. It's actually my favorite way of working. And I want to run the SFDX force source deploy command right here. And we're using that M flag to pick the metadata we want to send up. So in this case, we're sending that lightning component bundle we just edited. And as this command completes, we're going to get information back in the terminal that it made it to our sandbox. So I know right away whether or not I'm working with the right data. So let's go back into our sandbox. And we're going to edit this page. We're going to go into Lightning App Builder. And the first thing I want to do is if users should be able to filter products, we need to get the filter component on the page. And now that we have our filter component there, let's save the page. And let's see if the changes we made in our controller make that middle component respond when we filter products. So Let's go ahead and lower the price range here. We're going to narrow the kinds of bikes we want to see. Already, it's looking good. And now I just want to look for mountain bikes. Let's get rid of all the commuter bikes. Here we go. So it looks right, right? <laughs> we went from 10 to 4. That seems good. But how do we know that these are actually mountain bikes less than, what did we say, $1,900? We have a little more work to do. So let's go back into the IDE. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to actually pull those changes we made in Lightning App Builder, those declarative changes in the environment. Let's get them onto our local machine. So we're running the twin of the deploy command we just ran. We're running the retrieve command here. Same M flag letting us pick that flexi page, the Lightning App page we just manipulated. And again, we're going to get that feedback right here in the terminal about whether or not it came down. And now we know our environments are in sync, working with our sandbox right here with the CLI. 
So now that I have those changes, I want to know what's happening in my apex, right? We want to know that the query is actually pulling mountain bikes with a certain price. And we're going to use another one of the Salesforce extensions to do that, the apex replay debugger. And we're searching for apex debug here because the first step is to get a debug log. Now, we can pull it down right here with a little command from our command palette, but we already have a debug log on our machine. So we're going to just launch the replay debugger with our last used log file. And now you can see we've already moved into the integrated debug section of Visual Studio Code. And on the left there, <laughs> we're looking at an Apex execution log, right? We've probably all seen this before. But the magic of the replay debugger comes when you step into that log. So let's start. And now you can see on the left hand, the other side there, <laughs> we're getting all the variables for our Apex method. And the debugger opened up our related Apex class. And we've stopped on line 32 with that little red dot because we set a breakpoint. As a developer, I could go into my Apex class, click next to the line number, and you're setting a breakpoint. And it tells the replay debugger to pause there and give you more information. So now we're seeing at runtime the values of all our variables. So keep your eye on, say, that categories place where Renee is hovering as we step into, say, line 40, our next breakpoint. And now we see we searched for a mountain bike. I know for a fact that the information coming in from my Lightning Web component is reaching my Apex exactly how I want it to. And all all of this is coming in the replay debugger without system.debug statements. This is happening purely from the information in that log. Yeah, it's incredible, which means any user in any org can send you a debug log, and you can debug locally and see what's happening for them at runtime right here. And all of this is included in the Salesforce extensions that you get today for free. Yeah. <laughs> So now that we know that our code is running the way we want it to, the next step is actually to run our tests. And we can see right here, integrated into v VS Code is a tab where we can kick off our Apex testing. But we're working with Lightning Web Components. So what about our JavaScript tests? Well, we've actually written some. We're amazing, right? So we're going to search again in the command palette, and we'll open up this product filter test. And we're using Jest to test our JavaScript here. It's a framework originally developed by Facebook, but we're using it to test our code for Lightning Web Components. So you can see on line 56, we're testing filter change events. So that filter component we were dealing with, these are tests for that. And on line 57, we're checking the slider, that price slider. We want to know that it behaves the right way, that when you set a price as a user, that's what's hitting the controller. So Renee, let's run this test. And he just right-clicked and ran that test thanks to another extension that we can install from the marketplace that runs our Jest tests. And look, it's already run, and we're still being awesome. Our test has a little bit of a problem. And if we scroll up, the extension is going to tell us exactly what's wrong. And it's because we said that our expected price on line 58 would be 500. And then I typed on line 65 only 50 as the slider value. So let's have the user actually search for 500 in our test here now. And let's run this test again. And as this is running, you'll notice it's pretty speedy. And that's because Jest tests run locally. We don't have to wait for them to deploy to a remote environment and then execute and then fetch the results and bring it back down. We already know that we fixed our error. And so we know right now that our Lightning Web Components are ready to ship to the next environment, whether that's production or another sandbox. And we can do it all right here in our IDE. And all of this, that local testing, that local debugging, the IntelliSense giving you what you need as you need it are how you can deliver modern apps faster with a modern developer experience. Back to you, Sarah. Thanks. Zane and Christoph both, those were just incredible demos. Thank you so much for all of that. Just incredible. I'm going to tell my daughters to watch the video and say, be like Zane, you know? Incredible. So what have you been saying online? What are your hashtag code goals? Miranda in Portland, she's excited to, that she doesn't have to do any manual transpiling, any, transpiling anymore, so it really simplifies the build process. And then also we see um, in Austin, Texas, uh, Illuminated Cloud, one of our great partners, and Scott Wells there, they um, are very excited because they have an IDE that when Lightning Web Components was launched, 
they had support for Lightning Web Components day one. So they're very excited to make it fun and um, easy as possible for all of you. We've been using VS Code, but also there's other IDEs that you can use, use the tools that you want. So we're all excited, we've been having fun. And before we get to the product roadmap for the features that are coming you know, downstream, we also want to welcome up Dory from Encino. Dory, come on up. I'm a hugger, sorry. Oh, good, so am I. <laughs> I didn't rehearse that with you yesterday. No, I, was, I probably I, I love the hug. <laughs> um, so, Dory, thank you so much for being here. And you've been in the pilot with Lightning Web Components. Um, how has it uh, helped you build apps faster? Yeah, well, thank you so much for having us. And I would say a couple of things have really helped us with Lightning Web Components. First of all, we're able to take advantage of the experience that our developers already have with web standards in order to get working with Lightning Web Components quickly. We're able to build once and know that what we build is going to work across all modern browsers. And we're able to compose UIs by putting together reusable pieces, um, which just lets us work so much more quickly. Well, so you've had the, thank you so much. You've had this experience. What advice do you have for everybody here in the tens of thousands online for Lightning Web Components? Uh, well, I would say just digging in, really don't be scared, dive in. Uh, luckily, there are so many resources available with the Trailhead modules to, to be able to take advantage of those. And then, you know, just getting familiar with the, the base components and see what you can build there and, and come up with a plan for how to take advantage of that as quickly as you can. Thank you so much. Thank you. A hug again. And thank, thank you, sir. Best to, um, send the best to Cassidy and the team. Thank, thank you, you so much. Bye. All right, so now you all want to know, like, what's on the roadmap? What's coming next? Ryan Ellis is sitting here. You can ask him later. But um, I'm going to share a little bit of a sneak peek for you. So first, uh, running and lightning out is on the roadmap. That's a big one that people have asked for from the pilot program. And then the Lightning event service. So think of this as, this is really incredible, and I hope I do this justice. Think of this like a PubSub framework that's built in for your, for your UX. So whether it's an aura component, whether it's a visual force, whether it's Lightning, you can have this easy way for all of the UX to, to interact. And then on the Salesforce DX side, uh, Wade and team have been working super hard, and Dave Carroll's sitting right here. Um, scratch orgs and pro sandbox, being able to create snapshots of those. So why this is important is you think that you create your, um, your scratch org, for example, and it has all the metadata and such in it, you get it configured well, you can just very easily create a snapshot of that so you can have different configurations so it's very easy for you to build apps fast. So those are just some of the features that are coming. Y'all excited about those? Yeah? yeah? All right. Well. We wanted to make it very easy for you to get started because this is very important. So you saw the component library in Christoph's demo. That's a great reference material for you and to tools to help you speed up your um, development. And then Trailhead, I'm favorite for that one. But we have um, two badges already, already released and four more badges that are coming on Monday. And then we have the sample gallery. Uh, you saw the recipes demo and the e-bikes demo. There's a whole gallery of apps there, and they've all been updated to have Lightning Web Components. So those are incredible ways to get started with LWC. Today's just the beginning. So what we're starting off is kicking off Global Developer Week. And what this is, is starting Monday, all of those 240 plus groups around the world are getting together to help each other learn Lightning Web Components. And if the camera can follow me a little bit, we, we, we make sure that all of, our, all of our events have like, you learn, you connect, you have fun. Have we had fun? Yeah. All right. We've also been having fun. Y'all might not know this, but we've been, oh, they're, they're taped down. I, <laughs> uh, I can pick up one of them. Actually, Sandeep's son built this one. We've been having fun building Legos, getting into the you know, Lightning Web Components uh, thing. And this one here is Buckingham Palace. But what we have here is San Francisco, Chicago, New York, Berlin, France, Paris, London, all kinds of cities, because we're going around the world. And we're excited. We've been having fun, but also giving back. Giving back is very important. So excited to share with you today that not only have we had fun building these, but we're donating them to our adopted school, the Urban Promise Academy, here in the um, Oakland Unified School District. And then at the Global Developer Week, for every community badge earned, we're donating a dollar to underprivileged children. So everybody. <laughs> So this is just a start. So I want to thank you all for joining us here and online and share your hashtag code goal so we can all have fun together. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>